Hey everyone, Duke Nugget 3D here with another mask to review in my collection, and today I have a, yet another Chinese mask for you guys. I can't get enough of these for some reason. The seller I get these from is just so very kind with these deals, and this is actually a mask that regardless, even for several years I've actually been wanting to get one of these in my collection, but due to the rarity it has not been possible, but now I finally buckled and paid the excessive amounts of money it costs to get one of these, and that is the Chinese People's Liberation Army uh, model FMJ-06A or MF-12 gas mask. Now, I know what a lot of you are going to think. Uh, Duke, I've seen this mask before all over eBay. They're very common. They only cost about 25 bucks. Well, here's the thing. That is the FMJ-05 or MF-11B mask, which is almost nearly identical. However, the main and only difference between the two is that the MF-12 reallocates the 40 millimeter Gauss filter port to the chin rather than to the side of the face piece for a standard Chinese uh, canister. The MF-12 was pretty much designed uh, to be a... Um, before I get into that, well, I want to go over the history, actually. So the the FMJ-05, which is obviously, like I said, the version with the side canister, was designed around 1987 or so, hence the original designation Type 87, uh, as a more modern upgrade uh, to the earlier uh, Type 65, Type 69, and Type 64 series masks still in service with the Chinese military at the time. And it was sort of a modern upgrade uh, as sort of a response to the Soviet PMK, uh, American M40, etc. style mask. Even though it does not share any sort of similar design traits, it was really just them saying, okay, we need to step away from white rubber, we need to modernize our designs a little bit more than we already have, we need to step away slightly from Soviet style uh, design features, however, we're still retaining some because we're still a communist country. But... So in 1987, the FMJ-05 was introduced, uh, designated the Type 87 for quite a uh, long period, and they're very common today, and they're still current issue with the Chinese military. As are these, but uh, these were designed, again, as a special purpose uh, variant of the Type 87 series, uh, in that because the Chinese doctrine at the time for special purpose masks was to use a longer hose and coffee can filter uh, so that decontamination crews, rocket refueling crews, um, people like that who need to wear masks for longer would have a more ample amount of filter time. And there have been cases where these masks have, have actually been used with blower units. And so these masks are, again, are still very much in current issue and they're very limited in production. They do not see a lot of sale outside of China. And in fact, it is actually very difficult to get these for a reasonable price. Most of the time that you will see these, um, they'll be on English Taobao or just Chinese Taobao. Uh, some of those like really difficult to work with merchant sites and they cost upwards of $113. That's, in fact, that's what I paid for my set. And uh, fortunately, I did, the, the carrier that I have with it is, is the one that I got with my MF-18 or my Chinese pro prototype panoramic mask. But again, I'm getting ahead of myself. So... Point being, these masks are very rare to find. Uh, you can find photos of them. Again, they're not hard to find photos of in use and just photos in general, but actually getting one, sourcing a sale for one is a bit of a, a bit of a challenge to say the least. So well, with that aside, let's get into the details of the kit itself. So the carrier here, as mentioned before, I am not entirely sure if this is the carrier that would have been used with these masks as it does not have any accommodation for a canister to uh you know be retained inside of it again i'm not entirely sure there isn't a whole lot of photographs of the carriers designed for the mf12 so uh most from what what i've seen they seem to use the exact same carrier as the fmj05 fmj08 and more recently the fmj09 mask so i'm i'm just going to go out on a limb and say that this is probably an accurate carrier to have with the setup the canister is, interestingly, the older Type 64 coffee can filter, um, and I'm pretty sure this is what is typically used with these masks. I'm not sure if this is any later production. It might be because um, on the inside of the coffee can that I got with my uh, Type 64B, uh, this uh, 
plug here, this little rubber disc inside the seal was actually red rubber and this one's black. So this might be indicative of a later design or later production. And then you just have the standard filter plug on the bottom. And uh, there would be markings on here, but the, this, this canister example has them all faded. I know I have another one of these canisters which has visible markings, but enough about that. Next up is probably one of the more interesting parts of this. I know Moulage was very interested in this hose uh, because it is a very strange hose. It is a... Uh, he, he finds them a little bit more aesthetic than the Soviet hoses, which to a degree I can agree to, just because I do like the uh, the zinc or some sort of uh, chrome or zinc plating, probably zinc, uh, on the threads. It's it's much more clean and uniform looking than any communist block hoses. And in addition, these hoses are much longer than your standard Soviet style hoses. As you can see, they're at least longer by at least half of the length of a Soviet hose. So. Um, the hoses are not that great of quality. As you can see, the corrugations are a little bit dilapidated and lopsided. And this is brand new, brand factory new. So this is not due to age or due to, um, you know, storage really. It's just due to the hoses being kind of poorly molded. And you can see there are spots where the, the stock in it outer layer has not been properly applied within the hoses. And I should go out on a limb and say this is not a Chinese normalized or uh, transitional style hose. This cannot fit on NATO. 40, this cannot fit both Gost and NATO canisters because this is uh, an earlier hose. The only Chinese hoses that can fit, uh, as far as I know, both Gost and NATO threads are the later industrial ones. And those ones will have a zip tie. Um, the, main, the main way to notice is that the the threads will be secured with zip ties instead of wire and tape as you see, as you see here. And then another thing to indicate them these being earlier Gost threaded hoses is that the internal ferrule here uh, will be painted olive drab instead of just being chrome like the rest of the threads. So that is uh, a thing to look out for if you're planning on buying a Chinese hose intending it to accept both Gost and NATO threads. Be on the lookout for early PLA hoses like this because they are only Gost threaded. And now without further ado onto the mask itself because there aren't too many reviews on this mask and uh, not a whole lot of collectors own these. In fact, I may be one of the only US collectors that have has one of these. I know uh, Bart Wilkes from gasmasks.net aka Le Mask a Gaz, his database website, he had one, but he has since sold off his entire collection uh, I think since 2015. Uh, I'm, I could be wrong on that. Again, I, just, I don't have it memorized. But yeah, I, as far as I know, I'm one of the only collectors in the U.S., at least that we know of, that has one of these to display. The only other collector I know of in general that has one of these currently um, is Sam Hine. And I'll probably link his video on this because this is an interesting one because his is actually made out of blue rubber with blue plastic hardware, uh, which is probably indicative of an industrial one. Uh, again, he probably explains it a lot better than, he, than I can because uh, I just don't know for sure because I, I don't speak Russian, unfortunately. But enough about that. So looking at the mask, you can see, I know what a lot of you are probably thinking and probably have already commented by now, but um, it is very similar to the Czech CM4 and um, especially the Bulgarian PF1 or PG1 style masks uh, due to its M17 style lens shape and its central voice emitter and outlet valve assembly and chin canister. Um, I don't believe it had any distinct influence from the Czech and Bulgarian masks. I could be very wrong on that, but as far as I know, this is just its own design based off of the FMJ05 with just the canister relocated to the chin, obviously. Uh, it uses a nice six-point harness here. In this case, my example here has the slightly more uncommon but not really elastic head harness. These masks could actually come in e with either an elastic or a rubber head harness. I'm actually going to be getting a, rub a rubber head harness off of uh, Hype to install on this mask as well. Just so I have options to swap back and forth to have a either set really. Um, but yeah, the, the elastic harness is pretty bare bones basic. It's got a oil cloth head pad with a cotton backing here for the head pad, just a rectangular piece of oil cloth. And then six elastic straps with zinc plated uh, clinch tips, probably steel. Um, four of the top buckles are not easily adjustable. These are meant to be pre-adjusted. You can adjust them by tugging on them and you know slipping through them, etc. But they, they do not undo as easily as the bottom buckles, which are the typical German Israeli style button buckles or whatever you want to call them, where there is a tab and a roller uh, and that is what retains all the pressure uh, and is mu very, very easy to undo. But unfortunately, these, are, these buckles are also very easy to disassemble, so much so that I can see these coming off and undone. Uh, and that's why you really, it's not a good design 
if you're uh, these this buckle design is not really good for elastic webbing it is perfect for rubber webbing where it provides enough retention to keep that roller in place however with buckle or with elastic straps it is way too thin and i can see these coming off very easily um, other than that, really not too much else to mention about the exterior. All the hardware is permanently affixed in place with metal clamps that are crimped in place similar to Israeli style masks where there is a bridge of metal which crimps the two ends of the strap together. Uh, not much to say about that. You can see the 40 millimeter port on the bottom there. Um, it, uh, as far as I know, these are Goss threaded. I have not tested any NATO canisters on that. If it is, I will probably update in the description. Uh, again, I'm just too lazy to see if it will accept NATO canisters, but as far as I know and as far as I've been told, they only accept Gost. And then the outlet valve voice emitter assembly is, again, very reminiscent of the Type 64 and Type 65 masks with the central outlet ring, the green rubber diaphragm in the center, and then you have this sort of cushion valve where uh, as you exhale, it uh, when you're breathing in, it, this this flange is sucked up against this ridge on this plate here, and when you exhale, the air is pushed past that and out through these slits, which is the secondary outlet valve. You already know about that. Uh, get that back on, and I will reverse the harness and show off the interior because there's a few more things to mention about that as well. So give me one moment, folks. And thankfully, this harness is very easy to undo. Oh, before I do, I might as well show off the very few markings here. You have a size 2 stamp, which is, I assume, a medium, and then a 7 right there, which I would assume to be a face piece mold number, but I could be wrong. I can't find any dates on this mask, unfortunately, um, but I would assume that it would, be, would have been made at least, you know, in recent years, given how unissued and new this is. It, could, it couldn't be any older than probably the 1980s, the, or, or the 1990s, honestly. So, let's reverse the harness. And I will show off the interior because there's a few neat, neat features inside this mask that, again, are pretty much shared with the FMJ05. Um, but, you know, might as well just show them off. One thing that I did not mention about this mask is the composition of the rubber uh, that comprises the face blank. And it is a very, very soft and supple natural rubber latex. I know a lot of later Chinese masks will use sort of a... EPDM natural rubber blend like with my F or my MF18 panoramic mask that I showed off um, but this mask is just straight up black natural rubber as such it is very soft very supple very smooth very comfortable to wear um, I do know that there's a lot of flashes very uh, there's a few mold inconsistencies here and there um, you know impurities in the finish and just Again, you can see right here where they did not cut away all the flashes. There's plenty. I might cut that away later, um, but for the sake of the video, I, I might as well just leave it there to mention that this thing will come covered in flashes that have not been removed. You can literally just peel little bits of rubber off, and uh, yeah, so just get rid of those if you want. Uh, but anyways, you have a nice deep chin cup here, which can undoubtedly supply uh, or accommodate a large array of facial sizes. Um, you have the nose cup slash deflector system here you can see there is uh, molded air channel pockets which serve as the tiso tubes but are not integrally molded into the face pieces they are just bumps in the nose cup and then on the top here you can see it mimics the s10 avon style nose cups where there is no valves um, but there is just a a large opening on the top of the nose cup um, which in my opinion is probably the superior design for a nose cup and in a gas mask in general but in this case they do it a little bit blocky as you can see it's a it's a bit chunky a little bit of a big opening but i haven't had any problems with it uh, the nose cup is not the most comfortable but it is more comfortable than some so Really, not a bad mask at all. I'm very pleased with this. There's really not a lot of complaints I have about it, to be honest with you, aside from just, uh, I don't know, maybe improving the comfort and seal of the nose couple ever so slightly, not by much. but uh, And then uh, one other last thing to notice is that you probably saw there is fabric still underneath the crimping and even underneath these bands here. I don't, I don't know if you can actually see this on camera, but there is fabric underneath these wire cl or these metal clamps. So very much still retaining a lot of old Soviet uh, gas mask construction doctrine, but with a more modernized design. And I hope you all learned a thing or two. These, again, these masks are very rare. Uh, not that they're, well, not particularly rare. They're just very hard to come by, unfortunately, just because of the, the, the circumstances that these are still current issue for special purpose and uh, also very, very expensive for whatever peculiar reason. I'm not sure why. These, for, for some reason, these are always over $100. Um, so that's a bit unfortunate. So 
Um, based on this review, you could probably get a fair assessment on what the FMJ05 slash MF11B is like. So if you were looking at one of those, I would wholeheartedly recommend it as a beginner's mask and something that could undoubtedly protect you if sealed properly. Uh, so that's about it, really. Uh, ho hope you enjoyed again. Uh, be sure to leave any comments, questions, corrections, or concerns down in the comments below. I'm Duke Nina3D, and I'll see you all later.